Welcome back, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have a special guest, Mark Jian. He is a practitioner of Chinese medicine. He's been practicing for over 20 years, and he's also a practitioner of mind-body integration with a special focus and passion on working with night dreams and imagery. So today's topic, we'll be talking all about night dreams and how they affect our waking life. So thank you, Mark Gian, for joining me again for a lovely conversation. Thank you for having me. Um, I really appreciate your presence uh, on social media. I appreciate what you do. So it's always nice to be here. And uh, over the last month or so, I've been really inspired to start teaching again, whether it's essential oils or dreams, uh, mind-body medicine. But, you know, that's really where my heart and soul lie and everything is integrated to assist people in really accessing that part of themselves, right? Because that is our true nature, even though we live in this physical world and there's all these things that we need to move through, right? And I, it's beyond belief already. I know the importance of working with our night dreams. If we are on a journey of self-discovery and healing. And another word for healing truly is integration. Um, and when we dream, we are allowing ourselves to see and experience aspects of who we are and our life that we may not be aware of in the conscious waking world. And I'd like to say that our waking world and our dream world are both real on their own accord. And what is happening in our waking world and what is happening in our dream world are mirrors of one another. The difference, a major difference is that during our night dreams, there is no ego. The boundaries are not there. Mm. So when we are living in our waking world, this is linear. When we are living in our dream world, it's expansion, it's nonlinear, and healing is nonlinear. And when we come in contact with images in our dream, they are embodiments and qualities of our own self. And everybody in a dream, I know this is difficult for many people, everybody in a dream is an aspect of the self. Doesn't mean that you are that person, but there's a tendency for you to, to have a characteristic like this individual. And it's via our dreams that we come in contact with, with this part of ourselves to integrate it into our waking world, right? Too much, too many of us want to be perfect in our waking world, but, but we're not. We're human beings, we're growing, we're discovering. And images are not only an embodiment of qualities in us, but we need to take a look at when we think in our waking world. We're not thinking with words per se. We're thinking with images, right? I'm going to Mexico next week for the first time in a long time with my wife. So like, I'm not thinking M-E-X-I-C-O. I'm thinking the beach. I'm thinking, te looking at the, the tequila bottle, looking at the ocean, being with my wife. I'm thinking about all these like things. And, and what happens when I think or feel, I begin to, or imagine that it's a feeling that I get inside. And why is this important? Because no matter what we are thinking, it's via images and these images have a direct reflect on our physical body. And so I like to sh ask people, when you have a dream and you wake up anxious, who are you closer to? The person that you're sleeping next to, your dog, your, your, your wife, your husband, or the experiencing the dream? Because it's having a physiological response. So wherever your mind is, that's where you are. And when we work with dreams, we're working with a part of ourself that knows our past, our present, and all the possibilities of the future, right? Because as we live in the physical world, the waking world, what is something that we 
do every day? We make choices. And are these choices beneficial for us? Are they nourishing to our soul? Do they support our deepest purpose? Or are we going to make a choice that gives us a detour, you know, away from our deepest purpose? And in dreams, we get to see these obstacles via images, via scenes, via actual experiences that have physiological responses. So I, I always give this example. It's a it's a very simple example. You are in a dream and you are being chased by something. Okay, you're being chased by something. You wake up, you're panicked, you're scared. So what do you what is the first step when you awake to understand the meaning of your dream? How do I feel upon awakening? Oh, I feel, oh, I'm anxious. Okay. Yes, you're anxious as because of the scene, as a result of the scenes, the experience, and the dream. But let's bring that into the waking world. Where in your life are you anxious? Okay. So I will have my patient, my student, my friend write down, I feel anxious. Leave it like that. Okay. So this is bringing the dream into the waking world. And then, okay. So why am I anxious? I'm anxious because a bear is chasing me. Okay. So then I would ask my students, patient, friend, what is a bear? What's the meaning of a bear to you? And they can say a hundred different things. For our purposes, let's say it's something scary that can hurt me. There's something, I'm, I'm anxious because there's something scary that can hurt me. Okay, good. So now I'll ask my patient, friend, client, where in your waking world are you anxious? Where in the waking world are you anxious? And they usually will give me one or three things. The reason why I'll ask for one or three things and not two, because two is the number of conflict. And I'm going to go into um, numerology in my, a little bit in, in the dream class that I'm having tonight. So you always want it to be like a number of completion. One is union and, and three is synthesis after being divided. Now, okay, I'm anxious because of bear, but where are you anxious in your waking life? Okay, what's scary in your waking life? What's scaring you in your waking life? I'm anxious because I am starting a new job. I'm anxious because I have a big test coming up. Or I'm anxious because one of my family members is sick, right? There's all these things, right? And then I'll ask my the person I'm working with, what's the main drama of the dream? Okay. So the main drama of the dream is or, or, the, or the setting, then I would ask the setting, I'm sorry. What's the setting of the dream? I'm running away from a bear in my home. Ah, mm -hmm. so what's in your home that you're anxious of? What's the meaning of your home, right? It's where I reside, it's where I cook, it's where my livelihood is, it's where I want to relax. So we put those things together. Then the main drama, what's the main drama of the dream? I am running away, um, I'm running away from a bear that I am afraid of in my house. Then you tie that all into the sentence and then you bring that into the waking world. I am anxious in my house. Ah, so what's happening in your house? What's happening? You know, how is the heat in your house? <laughs> right? How is how are you paying your bills? How is your 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 siblings doing in the house is there anybody that you are afraid of do you need to share something to, with someone in the house that you are afraid of right because if something is chasing you in a dream it's there for you to see what it is right what actually is it so if we have the overview of the dream right and we could create a story of what the overview is here then what do we do with it right People always ask me, what's the meaning of the dream? The meaning is good, but you have the opportunity to, to change the dream, the images upon awakening. So instead of feeling anxious and fearful, you can have courage, right? Mm. Because with courage, we can move forward in life. And the bear is just an embodiment of this fear. But the bear is coming from, from within you, right? 
So you, if you do not change your dream, there's going to be a dream like this that keeps on recurring and recurring and recurring until you get the message. So why don't you change the dream? And we can change the dream however we like because the dream comes from us so we can change it via our own imagery. So then once we have the overview of the dream, I'll say, okay, so do you want to stay with this? Do you want to stay anxious? Or would you choose to have courage, right? And if they're having, you know, some, they're going a little bit back and forth, I'll say, okay, what are the pros of staying anxious? What are the pros of feeling courage, right? I don't ask for what the cons are. I want to stay in the positive. So eventually they'll say, yeah, you know what? I want to be courageous. And so with courageous, what do we do? We're going to engage our willpower. So this person is being able to start and take responsibility for their life. Aha, the key of mind-body integration, one of the keys is allowing our students, our patients to be the authority of their life. So the bear probably has a message for this individual, right? In any case, once they have the overview, then I share with them how to change the dream, which I'm going to be going over tonight. So when we change the dream, when we change the images, we're changing the embodiments inside of ourselves. So we change the mental, the emotional, and the physical, all at the same time. So what I have my clients do, I ask them to sit in Pharaoh's position or a king's position, king or queen's position. Why? Because when we sit with our body straight up, we are aligning our dew channel, we're aligning our spine to be grounded and also stating the intention that we want to live with integrity. We want to ascend upwards, right? Healing is ascending. So their feet are on the ground, their sacrum's on the chair, their, their body is aligned. And then I say to them, in your dream, in your imagination, anything is possible. When you change the dream, you change your mental, emotional, and physical. You can change the dream however you would like. This is your own world. Just shut your eyes, take a few slow breaths. And in this case, I would ask this person to state the intention of your dream, uh, to change your dream in your mind. So somebody's intention can be, I am changing my dream so I can live in courage, right? right? Not that I am changing my dream to let go of anxiety because we want to focus on the positive. I want to shift the images in my dream so I can live in a world where I am courageous. So I ask them to shut their eyes. I count down from five all the way to zero. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. And at zero, I want you to bring your consciousness to the most climactic part of the dream. And in your imagination, Know that anything is possible. You can use your own imagery to change the dream to your liking. Now, this is important because everybody has a different tendencies, right? Somebody that has a tendency or, or that needs to express anger may want to kill the bear, right? Somebody that's, you know, living in a world where they just want peace and love and, you know, uh, you know, like that, that's not me, right? I want to, I want to kill the bear. <laughs> I want to just, it's true. Right, I'm at peace with that. But somebody may want to say, give the bear a heart, or say, you know, whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. but they change it to their liking, right? And I ask them to change the imagery to the liking, so they may shut their eyes. Fifteen to twenty seconds, the dream has changed. Okay, how did you change the dream? Oh, I ran up the tree. And the, the bear was still there, but I was using my laser power to, to destroy the bear. Or I ran up the tree, and you know what? The, the bear turned into a ladybug. Ah, what's the meaning of a ladybug to you? Ah, the meaning of a ladybug is actually something that uh, is from my grandmother. She would love ladybugs, and she had ladybug imagery all over the house. Ah, so perhaps your grandmother is a, going to be a source of strength for you during this time, right? And so you take that and they live in the waking world with that, right? So, okay, so I think it'd be a good idea. Maybe you can have a picture of your grandmother by your computer, just as a reminder for the encouragement, like, like a talisman. And when they do this, 
their whole world changes. You know, it, they really do. And I know we're both acupuncturists, right? So we could think, okay, we're going to use pericardium 6, REN17, kidney 7. Kidney. That's great as like an adjunct to continue to support it. But true healing happens with the mind when they begin to take their own authority. And why did I mention anxiety? Because when we are living in a world of anxiety, we are creating an image that's not true. So we're living in a reality that's not based on truth. In order to live with true strength, right? True quote unquote spirituality, we live with truth, with what is. And then I ask my patients to do this for three weeks because we want to keep on building up the, the muscle memory, the mental memory. And even though I did this imagery with a dream, I do this kind of thing with people that have had abuse, have had trauma. You know, like I worked with people that have fibromyalgia and have done this kind of imagery and like their pain is 50% gone. And like, it's like, and this is why I love dreams and mental imagery so much because over and over and over, it's been proven to me that if we change the images, change the way that we are thinking, changes the images, we're going to change our world. Do you have any questions? If not, I want to tell you a quick story about how I met my wife. You can say, I can just add to that, that it is very similar to other therapeutic modalities where we're using imagery to reframe the past, right? Yeah. To reframe the past events and thus change the energetic imprint of those past events. And then energy in our life inevitably changes because it's yes. it's really about that energetic imprint of the events whether right. they're in our dreams whether they're in waking reality right. for sure and one thing that i want to add to that it's like whenever we are remembering an event it's just a memory right it's just like you're not, you're not upset at the actual event anymore you're yes. actually upset because of the imagery that's been replaying in your mind so be the hero of that. Be the hero, right? Do you know how many times, like, even now, when, like, I say something stupid or, like, I, like, I'll get upset, I'll be like, how would I have done this differently? And so it's like you're making a correction. And the more that you do that, the more times when situations arise, you're, gonna, you're not going to act the way that you did, right? And also, what I advise people to do is when they want to find out something in their life or how to obtain something or what to change, dear higher self, dear soul, dear God, in a, in a journal. So I, I was single for a long time. And I was like, you know, and I did a lot of work on myself. I'm like, you know, what? I'm not doing online day. I'm not doing any of that stuff. I'm not being, so I'm done. Done skis. I said, God, listen, we got to talk. Dear God, let me I know about how I can find a real relationship, you know, like a wife. I went to bed, I had a dream of my wife in a white dress and I'm walking right towards her. This was, my wife is a woman that I've known since ninth grade. Wow. In ninth, 10th grade, you know, we got to know each other a little bit. I saw her at the reunion 15 years ago or maybe even longer. And I said, wow, this is like, who is this? Like the same energy was there. I would look at her pictures on Facebook and Instagram and be like, why am I not with this woman? Like, like I would like, like, I love you. Like, blue. like, and it was real love. It wasn't like, you know, you see a picture and you're like infatuated, like, but it's like, that's my woman. Like, that's like, we are like. Meant to be. Yeah. And then like, yeah. Then I reached out to her right after I had that dream. And we've been so together. So your dream basically guided you to reach out to her in waking life because yeah. the imprint was so strong in the 100 percent yeah and like then we've been we've been together ever since and yes. uh that's an amazing and it's, and it's it's and it's it's soulful right and the yeah. idea of working with healing and the way that me and you like ideally work with healing it's it's spirit and soul, right? And what we are here to do is 
our best to connect our spirit with our soul. And that takes a lot of work. And it's via mental imagery dreams, at least the way that the way that my energy vibrates with, where I can go with these, go to these places with my patients and offer support and guidance and not tell them what they need to imagine, not tell them what I'm what the dream means per se, guide them, ask the right questions. Because it has to come from them. You know, so many people ask, what does this dream mean? What is this dream? It's like, and then what do you do when a, a quote unquote dream interpreter tells you what it what it means? The meaning is not set in stone. Like yeah. I said earlier, dreams share the past, present, and all the possibilities of the future. So it's up to us to choose a healthy and happy possibility for us. And tonight I'm going to be going over you know, a little bit more about dream work. And I'm going to be having more and more classes. I'm going to be doing a six month program on uh, mental imagery, dream work, morphology, which is studying people's faces. And why do we want to study people's faces? It's not to judge them, it's to observe. So we know how to speak with them and how to communicate what their tendencies are. And this yeah. work, as, as much as we are, can be highly intuitive. It's about observing somebody and assisting them to go a little bit higher to who they really can become. Even if they just go one little step, that's good enough because healing is happens slowly. And as a practitioner, it really helps you to connect to their true self, because like you said, you know, the, the way we view the face from the front versus our profile, which is our true self or yeah. right. Instead of how we represent ourselves to the world from the yeah. front front facing, it can really help us as healers to help our patients hundred percent clients yeah. way more. Because you, yeah. that, it's like, oh, I understand who they are, and this is the picture they're portraying to the world. But let's get to your real self, to that. One hundred percent, yeah. And and that takes time, and you know, doing dream work and the work we do, it takes yeah. honesty. It takes honesty. It takes a lot of honesty, you know, and like that's scary, you know, mm -hmm. and it's really, but don't be afraid because it's going to be okay, <laughs> you know, like. It's okay 100%. to go down because the deeper that you're allow allow yourself to go down into the depths is is equal to the amount that you can love and have grace and and rise higher and support other people, and you know there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. A hundred percent. I have a personal experience where I was pregnant uh, this year and I went through a miscarriage, unfortunately, at three oh. months. But during the whole pregnancy, I had these dreams of struggles where I'm walking through mud and going through the slums of Brazil and water and all these dreams of water and me like swimming through and just like difficulties. Right. And then in retrospect, it's like, ah, OK, if I if I was interpreting them at the time, I would have known something wasn't right, that it wasn't going to be a viable pregnancy. But anyways, we can use we can use dreams for so many, many different things. And this is amazing for, for those of us who remember our dreams with ease, or for those of us who maybe have used tools and techniques, whether, you know, from your book, which I, I'm linking down in the description below, so people can purchase it on Amazon if they like. But how do you think people who think they can't remember their dreams, Right. Or well, people would say, I don't dream. I mean, we yeah. all dream. We just don't all remember them. Are yeah. there tools that you can maybe just briefly tell? Yeah. People? So the first thing I would, you know, do the exercise of writing it in a journal, your question. And even if you remember one millisecond of a dream, it's important. You see a snowflake. Great. What's the meaning of a snowflake? It's different than a raindrop. Right. So like you, you start slowly. Um, also. Make sure if you're choosing to really work on your dreams and remember them, when you wake up, don't run to the bathroom right away. And if you say, I don't remember them, just allow yourself the freedom to take a few slow, deep breaths. Relax your mind. Don't try and see if any images come to you, right? And um, another thing that you can use, you could use like um, maybe a drop of like rosemary essential oil on your pillow because that can help with memory. Um, geranium may be a better choice because geranium is a little bit more relaxing. Calms the mind instead of- Yeah, so those are those are some things that 
that you can do. But really, it all starts with choice and claiming that you're going to remember your dream. You know, choose to remember your dream, you know, and know that there's wisdom there for you. And when you have a dream, yes, you can say, oh, thank God it was just a dream. dream. Yes, but it wasn't just a dream. There's wisdom there. And that wisdom is coming to you so you can be literally the best that you were, best that you are, better than, than you were the you day were. before, right? And like, and you know what? If you choose not to work on your dreams, that's cool too, you know? And just Absolutely. accept, you know, it's like when you accept things, that's okay too. Because we all have things that we don't want to see. We all have things that we don't want to work on yet. And like, that's okay. Give yourself that grace, but don't repress it. At least stick with the awareness. Don't repress it. Be aware that it's there and say, you know what? I love myself anyway. Because at the end of the day, there's two things that we need for healing. Love, and I equate grace with love, and also faith. And faith is allowing yourself to not know the unknown and have and engage your will with that. Yeah. And okay. A lot of people get sick because they don't know what's going to happen. But you know, nobody knows what's going to happen. And let me tell you something. As someone that's very intuitive. You still don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> psychics only tell you the possibilities. Exactly. So that's please, what I tell my clients story, all the time. Like, Please be really aware of that. Yeah. Okay. And honestly, most of the time, they're just reading your, many times they're just reading your your voice and your face anyway, and they're not realizing it. So trust yourself. And trust if you're yourself. looking for like, make sure, I don't know why I'm saying this, because I think probably many of you, the people are very spiritual that you're, you, you, you attract truly. Make sure that when you find a teacher, that they're sincere, that they're willing to share with you some of their things that may be weaknesses, right? Yeah. Like I love tobacco, right? Yeah, okay. I'm 46 and like, how can you be healing? Like, that's me. That's I got me. Hundreds of testimonials because, like, I have to. Yeah. You can't. You can't be a fake. Do you know what I mean? So, like, make sure that there's like a true sincerity for that individual to assist you, and it's coming from their heart and their soul, and from a place of their own healing and their own deeper self. Yeah. And not from the ego. Okay. Because as healers, we're just vessels. We're just 100%, vessels. You 100%. know, we, we want to help them shine that light onto their true self so they can heal themselves. We're just the vessels to help them get there for sure. So you're you're teaching, um uh you're talking about a six-month program that may be coming up. Yeah, um, that's you know, any potential little... dates or well, no, yet? not yet. It's okay. already December. I'm probably thinking. February or maybe late January. And it's, you know, it's going to be a six month program. We'll probably meet once, but uh, twice, twice a month. Um, there'll be a workbook involved. There'll be, you know, you know, exercises for everybody to do. And when we come into contact and work with, you know, this kind of work as a group, we're creating a collective consciousness. So everybody is here together and whatever I do and whoever comes to me, whether it's in my office or a class, whoever it's sacred to me and it comes from above and I treat it like that. And yeah, like I, I can't run away from being from, from this part of my being, you know, I, I can't, you know, <laughs> but it's, so it's like, you know, there's this, everybody has a divine purpose in life and that may for some people be a healer for some people it may be being a mother for some people it may be being an, an accountant right for you sure. don't we can't judge what it is but to live it for the fullest and know that we are part of the unity of life we're part of the circle of life in whatever we're doing and we can do it with the consciousness of knowing this is where we need to be and when, when we have that idea that we are exactly where we need to be, we can fulfill it 100%. So be here now and uh, and also be there tonight at seven o'clock. If not, that's cool too. That's cool too. <laughs> Amen. Christina, thank you so much.
Thank you so much. Your website is in the description below so people can find out about your courses and offerings. And again, pleasure talking to you. I hope we sparked a little spark of interest for really uh, getting into dream world a little more for people. Yeah. All okay. right. I'll talk yeah. to you soon. Take care. See you later. Bye.